Have you ever been in a social gathering, maybe a party, and you're hanging out with your friends, maybe some colleagues, and there's a Bluetooth speaker in the background? Everything's good except there's one issue. The music that is being played is horrible. Either doesn't fit the vibe or something like that. So in that moment when you're with your friends, you wish that you were the one who had control of the Bluetooth speaker. The individual in the background or with the phone and boom, you click play and whatever music your heart desires, it is played. No matter if the person who has connection to the speaker is playing the music or not, you are the one who's controlling the speaker. So in today's video, what I want to try doing is using my cyber security expert hacking skills. <sighs> Dang it. Stack overflow we go. Okay, maybe not expert hacking skills, but I'm going to try developing a program which allows me to hijack the Bluetooth speaker session. To accomplish this task, I have two sets of equipment. The first thing is a Bluetooth speaker. In this case, it is a JBL Flip 4 running Bluetooth version 4.2. The next thing is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And in this case, this has a little Bluetooth adapter which allows me to communicate with other Bluetooth devices. With these two devices, I'm gonna try developing a method or program which allows me to hack in to the Bluetooth speaker. So then all I would have to do is just, you know, carry around this big old bulky Raspberry Pi and I would be able to hack into anyone's Bluetooth speaker, especially my friends. So with that behind us, let's go ahead and get started. My first step was to go ahead and unbox the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that I had ordered specifically for this project. After unboxing that, I would perform the basic setup. Cool, looks like this works. Now it's time to go ahead and set the rest of this thing up by working inside here. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So after turning on the Pi, I went ahead and followed an online tutorial which allowed me to get up and running with the Pi with remote SSH connection into the Raspberry Pi via my Windows computer. So after that, it was time to go into the research phase. So I found this article online, which I'm going to be using a couple of the tools and technologies that they recommended that I go ahead and do. So full credit to the author of this uh, article here. So if I scroll down here, you're going to see a list of tools which will allow us to work with uh, with Bluetooth devices. I'm going to use the same tools as recommended within this article, and I'm going to go ahead and do that by uh, first setting up the Raspberry Pi, and then from there I'm going to go ahead and create a Python script which is going to use some of these open source uh, Bluetooth hacking tools to get into the Bluetooth speaker. To do this, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, write a sketch that um, kind of walks through my thinking process about how I think about solving this problem. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and try to implement this through a Python script. My original thought process was to mock the scenario mentioned in the article. So using the Raspberry Pi, I was going to insert myself in between the victim and Bluetooth speaker while they were conducting the pairing process. I was going to use the knob attack to lower the entropy bit rate to one. From there, I was going to write a program to brute force the encryption key so I could insert myself in between the session in clear text. And as mentioned in the article, I was going to use an open source tool called BT Proxy to set up a man in the middle relay between the victim and the Bluetooth speaker. At this point, I could send my music files to the Bluetooth speaker while the victim would have no control of the Bluetooth speaker. All right, so I am ready to start creating my Python script. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and install internal blue in BT proxy off of GitHub. Link is in the description below. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with the initial configuration process. While downloading the open source tools, I had encountered one critical problem. The BT proxy open source tool was outdated. The last known update was in 2015, and the GitHub page specifically said that it was discontinued. I had tried downloading the dependencies of this open source tools at different versions to make it work, but it was all not functioning correct. I couldn't find the correct versions. So I thought that, well, at this point, I can't really do this type of attack. 
Not only was the open source tool outdated, but I also realized that in between the pairing process between the Bluetooth speaker and the victim, I would have to be at the right location at the right time. And oftentimes for people who already have Bluetooth speakers, their phones are just automatically connected to the Bluetooth speaker. At this point, I thought the project was over, but throughout my process of research, I did figure out how to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Bluetooth speaker, as well as send audio or a music file to the Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so it's the next morning. Throughout my research, I did find one method that I could use to connect to the Bluetooth speaker and inject my own audio stream. Now, it's sort of similar to just connecting another phone to a Bluetooth speaker, but it's a little bit different, sort of. So let me just go ahead and show you because it force connects. Into my controlled environment, what I found out is that if I connect the Raspberry Pi to the JBL Bluetooth speaker, I could go ahead and override the music session that would be currently being streamed from the victim phone. In this case, I could override the music and play from my Raspberry Pi as I inject the audio stream. So let me go ahead and show you my process of connecting to the Bluetooth speaker using the library Blue Z and then uh, injecting an audio stream using the Pulse Audio server. All right, so here in front of me, I have my JBL Flip 4 speaker. It is turned on here, as you can see from the power button. And I'm gonna go ahead and get into my SSH session with my Raspberry Pi 3B+. Part of the Blue Z uh, packages, um, there is a Bluetooth command line utility called Bluetooth CTL. So if we run Bluetooth CTL, it's going to go ahead and launch an interactive uh, session here. And there are multiple commands that we can issue. So in this case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is try doing scan on. This is going to go ahead and turn on our scanner. Uh, now, I did capture the Bluetooth address of the JBL Flip 4, I, but I had to put that in discoverable mode. So using the discoverable mode method here, I got the Bluetooth address here. Uh, and then once I find the Bluetooth address, um, for instance, if we go ahead and just click the discoverable here, that load. So once I find the Bluetooth address, I don't have to worry about it again. I can just go ahead and put this down here. So with that being said, I know the Bluetooth address. And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the Bluetooth address here. Do go ahead and select, right click. And then I'm gonna go and turn the scan off. Okay, all right. Once that has stopped here, I can go ahead and try connecting to the Bluetooth speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Connect here. As you can see, it has a little doo 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 and it's connected. I have my JBL Flip 4 uh, connected to my phone as well. So right now I have both the Raspberry Pi and the JBL Flip 4 connected to my Bluetooth phone or on through my Bluetooth on my phone. So at this point, you can see it has a little JBL Flip 4 and we can do whatever we want. In this case, we are done connecting to the Bluetooth speaker. So we're gonna go ahead and do exit. At this point, we need to get the sound card information so that we can go ahead and inject our own stream of music. Now, before moving forward, what I found out was uh, I needed to first go ahead and put music onto my Pi. So I went ahead and do that. Uh, I just used the FTP client FileZilla to transfer a music file from my Windows computer to the Pi, pretty easy. And then I, if you do ls here, you can see I have chill2.wav, that's the sound file I want to play. Now there's a sound driver called Pulse Audio, which allows you to inject music streams. So to do this, what I went ahead and did is I did PACTL, and then you can go ahead and do list cards. And at this point, you're gonna have a couple of sound cards. Uh, cards zero and one, I didn't have to worry about. So in, in card 12, uh, the next card, the third card in the listing is what the one that you would want if you're connected to a speaker. So at this point, what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is select the name of this driver here and go ahead and right click to copy. We're almost done. Uh, at this point, we have our music and we also have the sound card name. Now we can go ahead and do PA play. The dash P flag allows us to play. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and play on a specified device. And in this case, it's going to be blue Z card. But in this, in this, we're actually, we're gonna change the blue Z card to blue Z sync. And we are also going to append that A to DP underscore sync. All we need to do is go ahead and inject the music in there. So ch chill uh, underscore two dot wav. And as you can see, it is playing the chill to wav uh, music. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and stop this, I could just do control C to interrupt the session and boom, there we go. So it's very manual and also, you know, my phone is still connected to the speaker, but it's, it's a more of a manual type process. Um, and you have to make sure that uh, you, know, you can connect it to a speaker such as the JBL Flip 4. I'm not exactly sure how many other speakers uh, would allow this to happen. So there you go. That's the attempt at trying to hack Bluetooth speakers. It's definitely uh, the method that I created was definitely nothing revolutionary. Um, but it was sort of successful in the attempt to try to connect and try to play my own music. Uh, I hope all is well. The articles and the tools that I use will be in the description below. So for those of you who maybe want to replicate something like this, I can, that can maybe be something you can do. Um, yeah, so I hope all is well. And until the next time, have a good day.